This is Carl from National RV Detroit and I'm going to walk you through this 2022 uh, Forest River Salem Cruise Light. Model number 28 VBXL. So this is not a floor plan or a sales video, it's just a how-to video. I'm just going to show you some of the features and, uh, and uh, we'll go over how they work and that sort of thing, okay? So to start off with, this particular trailer has uh, regular scissor type stabilizers here as you can see but it also has a an attachment called a strong arm so the strong arm will take the when, when the trailer stabilized it'll take the forward and rearward movement out of it um, so the only thing to remember about this is it has these t-handles these t-handles create friction between this outer tube here let me see if you can even see what I'm seeing this outer tube here and the smaller one that slides inside of it so when you get this down into position, whenever you're moving the jack up or down, you always want to loosen this T-handle a little bit so it moves freely. Then when you get it down into position, you'll snug it up like that. And that'll, that'll help you with some of the motion of the trailer. Uh, when you go to bring them back up, you just loosen them up a little bit, okay? Of course, you got four of them, one on each corner. Those uh, two hoses hanging down with the valves on them are the low point drains. That's the lowest point of the plumbing. Use that. You worry about that, something like that, or uh, when you're uh, winterizing, dewinterizing, things like that. Okay. You got a power awning with LED strip, outside speakers. This is a vent for the range hood. So if you're going to run the fan in the range hood uh, over the stove, you want to open this up like this. So this baffle, I know it's hard to see because it's black, but the baffle flaps freely. You want it to flap freely when you're venting. Otherwise, when you're traveling or in storage, you can just snap it shut, okay? Um, this is just a hookup for a sprayer. There's a sprayer in the outside refrigerator, I noticed. Let me see here. Well, let me show you this before that so I could. This is the fill for the fresh water tank. Now, obviously the most common way to get water to the trailer is the city water hookup. But if you're going to camp somewhere that doesn't have plumbing on the campsite, you can pre-fill this tank and then pump the water out with your with the onboard water pump, okay? So that's only used if you don't need or if you don't have city water. I'll show you the city water when we get over to the other side. Um, okay, so I showed you the sprayer port and this is the, your sprayer here. It's coiled. There's the sprayer and then there's the hose. This, um, this griddle it has to be plugged in in order to to use it. I'm talking about plugged into the LP system. So that's what this is right here. That's a quick connect for the LP system. Um, there's a hose for this. I haven't actually seen it yet, but I'll make sure there's one in there for you. And uh, you'll hook the hose on here, and then you hook it to the quick connect underneath, and uh, you're all set. Uh, also, that that white valve down there, that gate valve, that's the drain for the city water. Or, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the, the fresh water tank. In case you're leaving and you're, you're done with it, you don't have to carry the water with you, you can just dump it really quickly. This is your hitch. It's a Husky Centerline weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control. Uh, we'll show you how it operates when you pick up the trailer. We'll show you how to hook it up and everything, if you don't already know. Um, you have cranks in here. Let me see, there's... What I'm looking at here. So you have a crank right over there, which is a it's smaller. I hope you can see it. It's smaller than a regular three-quarter inch crank for the stabilizers. Um, that's used for the tongue jack in this case. The tongue jack is a power tongue jack, but if it happens to fail, you can pull this plug out of the top and put that crank on there and crank it manually. Okay. Also, what we're saying here, you got uh, Two LP tanks with a regulator. That is a deep cycle marine battery right there. And this red key here is the kill switch for the battery. If you want to shut the battery off in storage, for example, you could shut it off right there. Okay. Let me see here. What else we have down here? Yeah, so this is just your dump hose and uh, an adapter right here to adapt your power cord down if you need to. The slide out is a Lippard 
through through wall slide outs, commonly referred to as a Schwintech, just so you know. Okay, this is your your water heater on the outside. The switches are inside to control it. Um, let me get this out, it's got fresh clock on it. Now the thing to remember about this, excuse my camera work here for a second, I gotta get down here, okay. Um, the thing to remember, take that all the way off there, is there's this rocker switch right here, if you can see it right there. That rocker switch controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover here. So in order to use the electric heating element, there are switches inside the trailer for additional switches for gas and everything. But in order to, to, to use that, you've got to flip this to the on position. Okay. Right now this water heater is empty. It's winterized. It's been drained. There's no water in the, in the system at all. So you always make sure that you fill the water tank before you, you ever turn it on because it'll burn out the element really quickly if you, uh, if you do that. You've always got to have water in it. This is the drain right here. It takes an inch and a sixteenth six point socket. You need that plus a six inch uh, uh, extension and a breaker or a ratchet, whatever, to, to unscrew it. But that's, that's how, where you drain it. You also bypass the water heater. Um, if, I'll just put that up in a minute here. Hold on. You bypass the water heater before you put any antifreeze in it, too, of course. All right, these are your your valves here. You got your black tank valve. You've got a um, gray, another one over there. Um, so you always want to uh, dump the black first, then you dump the gray because it just the gray water is cleaner. It's sink and shower water. The, the black water is obviously toilet water and waste. So after you do that, if you leave the black tank open, you can hook your hose at the dump station right onto here. The valve's got to be open, like I said. Turn it on and it'll spray the inside of your black tank out. So it'll clean it out, plus it'll clean off the sensors so you get a really good uh, accurate reading uh, for the levels. So that's a good thing to do. Um, now I showed you the how to sil fill the fresh water tank on the other side of the trailer. This is the most common way you get water to the trailer. This is a city water hookup. You're just going to put your hose on there, turn it on, and everything's ready to go. Okay, your power cord is uh, 30 feet and 30 amp. These are just uh, cable, cable satellite and uh, cable and satellite through. This is pre-wired for a backup camera. Okay. Um, now while we're looking up here, you got to remember you, it's important to inspect your roof every 90 days. The manufacturer states you should do it every 90 days. So if someone needs to go up there very carefully, of course, um, check all the sealant out. Make sure there's no cracking or separation, any place water can get in. Look at the roof attachments, make sure nothing is damaged by, uh, you know, uh, road debris or low branches, that sort of thing. Just give it a good inspection. Odds are you won't have to do anything for a long, long time, but you still inspect it regularly just to, just to uh, make sure, okay? All right, so this light dimmer goes like that, that's all. Um, so you can check your levels, your battery's charged, fresh water is empty, black is empty, gray is empty. Graduates up in one third increments, so when you get past two thirds, you gotta start thinking about dumping the gray and black tank. Uh, so what, light the water heater on gas, right, you do it right here. Remember I showed you the electric switches in the lower left hand corner outside. Uh, to turn on the water pump, you do that. You'd run the water pump to pump water out of the fresh water tank. You also use it for winterizing the trailer. Of course you got lights. And then you have an awning switch here, okay. Uh, never leave the awning out unattended or, or it can get damaged very quickly. Um, that's your slide room button there. It's got a huge slide out which is kind of kind of neat. Um, okay, so these two devices have uh, have remotes. I, I could look for them here but I think I'll just explain it to you. I didn't prep this so, okay. Uh, we'll just do it this way. The this is your your uh, sound right here. So it's trying to connect with Bluetooth right now. Uh, let me just shut it off. Um, so you have Bluetooth, so you can you can stream wirelessly with your phone or your tablet. You have a HDMI here. Um, you also have uh, AM FM radio. You took got two speaker zones, one and two. One is inside the trailer, two is outside. Um, and uh, this HDMI is an in, 
So if you need to go into the system with a, you know, like a little, little portable Blu-ray player or something, you could plug it straight into that. Um, this this is where your TV coax hooks up to, but this green light should always be on when you're using the antenna. That's the digital signal booster, so uh, you won't get a good signal unless you got that on. Also, this is just telling this is pre-wired for a Wi-Fi uh, system, uh, a signal booster slash router. If they give you different options if you're interested in it, always get the one that has the antenna on the roof because that's very important. And there's also a, a hookup on the roof for it also. Alright, so this is your fireplace. Um, it has a remote also. Wait a minute. There we go. So you can turn it on, uh, on. Well, of course you can turn it on and off. Um, you can change the color of the flame this way, add blue. You uh, can change, radically change it here right um, that's the fan speed it's off it's on low it's on high so it really kicks when it's on high um, this last button is the timer so you can actually set set a time let's say if you get up at the same time every morning it's winter time you could you could turn it to set it to turn on 10 20 minutes before you get up in the morning and it will take all the chill out of the trailer that sort of thing so okay These are your keys. So, microwave works like any other microwave. This is the range hood I told you about. Um, fan. If you're using the fan, you want to uh, open the baffle on the outside, if, as I showed you. You got light. Um, I don't know if he's got gas turned on right now, so I might just have to talk you through this without actually lighting it. Let's see. Yeah, so he's, it's off right now. So. Basically, three burners, three valves, three knobs. Um, this is the sparker. You turn it clockwise to spark it. And when it comes to the oven, this is the oven knob here. There's a pilot light all the way to the back, down at the bottom. You can see me sparking it there. Um, so what you do is you take the knob and you go to the, the position uh, with the flame, or the, the line up the flame with the... Uh, Turn it to the flame and depress it. Um, then you'll start sparking it with the other hand. And after it lights, you still hold this in for another 10 seconds or so, and then you uh, go to operating temperature. When you shut it off, the flame goes out, obviously, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot each time you use the oven. Always travel with this down. Okay, you got a 12 volt DC refrigerator, which is great. Um, let me look around real quick. Of course, you're, you got two beds here. That jack knifes into a bed, and that one you can drop the table down, so you got two more beds. Then, if you go through to the bunk room, see right here, you got plenty more uh, um, beds here, potentially three of them. Okay. Let's see if there's a light down here so I can show you, I guess. I do have my flashlight. Let me do it this way. So this device down here is the power converter. So what this does is it converts AC to DC power. So you can see um, on this side, you, you, after you're plugged in, this, hit, this is uh, the control panel. You've got um, circuit breakers here. Right, and they're all labeled. Those are 110 AC. Then you look over here, and the power is converted to 12 volt DC. So you have 12 volt fuses there, and they're all labeled. If they if they blow, they'll actually light up. Um, except for these two right here, these 240s are the masters. So if you have like a wild power surge, and this and the 12 volt side goes out, start looking right there. That's where the problem's most likely going to be. Um, one other thing to know: this is a battery tender. So as long as you're plugged in, it's going to sense how much energy your battery needs up front and it'll uh, keep it charged up. Okay. This uh, couch here folds flat, like I said, so um, it's a good thing. There's also going to be TV hookups here somewhere that I haven't quite seen yet. I am running out of places to look here, so let me see. Okay, there we are, right there. Okay, so there's your, here it is right there. Um, 
You can set it right on there or put it on a bracket, whatever you want. Okay, your uh, shower and sink work like any other sink and shower. This is an RV toilet, so make sure that's the flush pedal there. The black tank's directly below. Make sure before you start using it, you put a dose of chemical in the bowl. Stand on the pedal and put about a gallon of water at least in there uh, before you use it. Otherwise, it can get clogged up, plus it will smell terrible. So make sure you always do the chemical and water first. Your thermostat here works like any other thermostat. You just hit the mode bar to light it up, then you scroll through it. Very simple. This is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector here. So if it goes off, you're going to um, take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off of the front, figure out what's going on. Okay, so this is a second or a, a, thir a, a third TV hookup, I guess. So there you have that. Plus, there's going to be a backer plate right here also, so you can hang a bracket there if you need to. There's some storage underneath the bed. There's a, a closed chute, sort of, with a bag there. Okay. All right. I think we might have it covered here. Let me look around and make sure I didn't forget anything. Looks like we're good, so. Okay, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Please remember, as always, the uh, manufacturers all state that you want to inspect the roof every 90 days. That's important. And right now the trailer is winterized. There's no water in the water heater, or the, excuse me, the water tank. Um, and if, wait a minute, let me back up again. I'm sorry. There's no, there's no, <laughs> there's no water in the water heater tank, right? Not the freshwater tank. So that's empty right now. Um, it's probably bypassed, although I didn't do it. So you got to make sure you put it in the correct positions when you uh, when you um, dewinterize it. Um, so this trailer is uh, winterized and uh, it'll be good till spring, okay? Um, I think that covers everything, so. Okay, thank you very much.